We just ventured down here to Glen Allen from Fairbanks. Because it's time to start fishing. It's Jim's favorite time of the year. And I think this is why he lives in Alaska. He loves fishing. This and is the very beginning of the salmon season. Don't know if we'll catch any this week. It's kind of a slow start. But I gotta get my practice in anyhow. Okay. I work on his flip. Uh, we're in his favorite spot in uh, Copper River. So this is the Clotina. And we end up coming here every year. So we get Copper River Reds. They're some of the best eating reds around. Uh, super strong, super lean. Super good fish. If we're fishing, that means that it's also close to Jim's birthday because that's when the Copper River Reds come into the Cochina River. So his birthday's coming up and we're trying to decide how we're gonna celebrate that, but right now we are gonna enjoy this cool little campground that we found right by the river. See how it goes. We usually just throw up a tent and... Um, we decided to splurge a little bit this week. Yeah. And we're not boondocking either. No, <laughs> we're not. But we kind of are, because we're not plugged in. That's true. But we have water available. Yeah. So, unlimited showers. Mm -hmm. Kind of nice. Mm -hmm. well, are we going fishing tonight or...? No, tomorrow. Okay, I guess we're going to make dinner, hang out, and fish on in the morning. I was in Lowe's a couple of weeks ago, and we've been carrying this timber tote log around for a few weeks now. Figured this might be a good time to give it a try and see what we think. It's uh, supposed to be an all-natural fire log with it's safe for cooking and... You drop a fire starter in the top hole and it lights for two hours. Let's light it up. I think it was like seven dollars. Warm. Nice. This is gonna be used for cooking too. Let's talk about dinner for a minute. We have a gorgeous view out there, and I just want to be out there and not in here cooking. And we have a bunch of fresh uh, vegetables and meat, and hopefully we'll be catching some fish out there, so we can be cooking out there. And um, instead of in so, tonight, I decided I, I just want to keep it super simple, and I have not organized anything in um, quite some time. So I think I'm gonna do uh, pasta, um, some pasta sauce with Alfredo, and maybe some. Let's take a look. Oh boy, um, Portuguese sausage and I have some vegetables there, but maybe I will use maybe some um, Alaska sausage. going for two hours now and it is nice and warm. I think it's pretty darn cool.
Well, good morning. It, it, it's kind of morning. I think it's actually afternoon, but it's morning for us. We have incredible weather today. It's about 65, 70. It's like sunburn weather. Haven't had any luck fishing here, so I'm gonna go hike down to my favorite spot. It's about a four mile hike round trip, and usually I go. Uh, last year I went and I, when we were crossing the river I got a little freaked out because the water came above my waist and I didn't have my hip waders on. And he's got his, I'm kind of in the mood to hang out at camp and relax and enjoy my time alone because when you're in a van, alone time is actually really important and I think that he should have some alone time fishing, I should have alone time enjoying this in the sunshine. Headed down the river, hopefully get some Copper River Red. What makes Copper River Reds so special? I mean, why does everybody talk about Copper River Reds? Why are they so good? They've swam by the time they got here for several weeks in fresh water. So they're just pure muscle. Super good fish. They're super fish. That's their new name. They're super, <laughs> super fish. And when you see one, when we get one and we open it up, and um, hopefully he'll get some video of that for you. When you see how red and beautiful it is, you'll see why they're super fish. Nothing like the fish that you buy at a grocery store. So fingers crossed we will have fresh Copper River Red Salmon for dinner tonight. We have the cast iron griddle and hopefully if he does any good, if he is any good fishing, we'll see. Kids are out of the house for the day and I get to clean up the van and I think I'm going to show you around to show you what it looks like when Jim and Ember aren't here and I have the place all to myself. First step, dishes. These are all left over from last night and usually we do them after dinner but we were having so much fun that we decided why not wait till the morning when I get to do them all by myself.
when it's just me in here and I have it all to myself, I tend to take out all the tables, every flat surface. It's clean. I think I'm going to take a nap. Anyway, we took this off of um, the wall here and it gives Ember a lot more space. Her blanket that we usually have down there is hanging up. And yeah, definitely clean. This is the mouth of the Clatina River, where it runs into the Copper River. It's an incredibly slow start to the fishing season. Not even a single bite today. I haven't even had a fish on. That's unusual. I'm going to head back and start doing some cooking. What a beautiful day. The mountains peeking out above the forest over there. So pretty. Now on this side, there's a thunderstorm. So we're going to walk back into it. This is really nice. The sun is like straight on us right now and I was thinking about taking a nap and I want to leave the back doors open. There's people fishing out on the bank. I was just thinking, you know, for privacy and airflow, I, I think this is perfect. I'm going to eat some fruit and um, get out of the sun for a little while. So I may have gotten skunked today on the river, but we still have plans for salmon. So this is the last of our salmon from last season. Uh, we're going to make some blackened salmon for you guys tonight. 
And the first step I have to do is I have to skin the fish. Normally when we fillet our salmon, we do leave the skin on it because when we're barbecuing, that helps us know that it's done. When we do blackened salmon though, you want to blacken both sides. So in this case, I have to take the skin off. You then want to put some olive oil on both sides. And there's a lot of different blackened seasonings that you can use. In this case, we're using Cajun's Choice blackened seasoning. And the purpose of the olive oil is it helps the blackened seasoning stick to the meat. We're going to start with cooking some veggies. Once the veggies are done, then we'll move on to the fish. A lot of people ask us if we've ever used cast iron. We use cast iron all the time. We do carry one in the van with us. And as for purposes like this, we can use it on the induction stove as well. The first step to making blackened salmon is cast iron skillet. We got heated up to 500 degrees. So that's why I took care of the veggies first. And now let's make some heat. Turn it up on high. We'll give it a few minutes to get up to 500. And then we'll be cooking. <laughs> We're at 500 degrees. I'm gonna try to adjust the knob and sustain it at this level for a couple minutes before I throw the fish on. All right, we've had the grill at 500 degrees. It seems to be set right. When you're doing this, you want to do it for three minutes on one side, three minutes on the second side. Flip it over real quick, do the second side. Wow, look at that. This is some blackened salmon. Oh. And there you go. Blackened salmon. Cynthia's making some rice to go with this. I'm gonna throw 
the veggies back on the grill so they warm up. But my goodness, we've got some pretty dang good food. We have veggies, blackened salmon, and rice. This is how you eat in Alaska during the summer. Let's chow down. <laughs> uh, okay, so we may not have caught it today, but we did catch this, and it, you know, it maybe tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> this fish came from this river last year just not today last year on your birthday <laughs> maybe next time okay i'm hungry been searching in the dark, trusting every clue I found. But the truth has not been told, there's every corner of these woods. Is